Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Tree Fitty in the 15 minute pool on ICC. So, Tree Fitty is a significantly lower rated player in Norwegian opponents, and hmm, I'll figure out what to do against the French in a second <laughs> while I rehash in my mind how much I dislike playing against the French. Yeah, when I was an E4 player, I never liked facing this defense. So. I'm going to go d4. I'll just go down the main road. And I think I'll play the Tarash. I'll play knight d2. Knight d2 is like a nice positional way of meeting the French. Although I've played... I have a lot more experience with knight c3. So maybe I should play that. I'm going to play knight c3, actually. That's more interesting. And against knight f6, I like bishop g5. e5 is another main line. Mm, so we're going to get a uh, McCutcheon variation, bishop b4. Yeah, that's quite an interesting move. Um, h6 now is forced by black. Well, not quite forced, but it's, it's the main line. And let's go bishop d2. And after bishop takes c3, we'll take with a pawn. Even though this voluntarily messes up white's pawn structure, um, Bishop takes c3 is considered kind of like innocuous, so I'm not really interested in playing that. Really? Knight fd7? Okay, I'm not aware of this move. I'm only aware of bishop takes c3. So, knight fd7, that's very interesting. My first thought is queen g4 must be the move in order to attack g7. So, let's play that. And usually they play king f8, or he might get fancy and play something like bishop f8 here. That would be very fancy. The French is a, a strange bird, you know. You can you can sometimes get away with playing like bishop b4 and then back to f8 in some of these lines of the winner, um, or the McCutcheon in this case, h4. So I wonder, I wonder what the value of him not having captured on c3 yet is. I mean, he'd love to play c5, clearly. Like, c5 is a typical undermining move in the French, and it attacks d4, which in turn is guarding e5. But as it stands now, he can't really do that because... I'm just going to go bishop d3 here. Um, he can't do that because if c5, I have knight b5, and that d6 square is very tender. Although maybe I shouldn't speak so categorical about this position because it's possible he could get away with it. <laughs> maybe we'll find out. Um, you know, there's also the possibility of me taking on g6 here. So bishop takes g6, and then if f takes g6, queen takes e6, check is very interesting. Huh. Or, yeah, take on g6 first. Okay, <laughs> a lot to think about in this position. So my first thought, my original intention was knight b5. But now I'm thinking that might not be as big of a deal. Actually, if knight b5, bishop takes d2, king takes d2, is it terrible if he goes, let's say, c takes d4, knight d6, check, king f8? Probably not. It's probably not so bad for him. Um, bishop takes g6, on the other hand, is looking more appealing by the second. I might just pull the trigger on that move. One thing, like sometimes bishop takes g6 in this position, or in this line, because it happens in other McCutcheon positions, can be met by rook g8. But here you can't do that because I have queen takes e6. So if I play bishop takes g6, he's pretty much forced to take it. I am threatening queen takes e6 then. So, and I'll get, at the very least, two pawns, probably three. And I'll have a nice initiative, too. His king safety will be forever in question. Yeah, actually, I think this is just a good move. So I'm going to do it. If fg, queen takes g6, king e7, I have queen g7, which will win his rook. So he instantly took back, so he must have been expecting it. If I go queen takes e6, then he has king f8 is the thing I don't like about that. So I think queen takes g6 is more accurate. Then if king f8, which seems forced, I have bishop takes h6 check. Then he'd have to give up his rook for the bishop, and yeah, I'm very pleased about that position. 
So let me just confirm. Queen takes e6. I mean, queen takes e6 is probably also good. I think just queen takes g6 is better, though. Queen takes e6, queen e7, or king f8. I mean, it, it is nice to knock out that pawn since that's defending d5, but... Nah, I'm leaning towards this way, so let's go Check. with this. King e7 is going to lose on the spot after queen g7. So yeah, king f8 only move. Uh, bishop takes h6. Any reason not to do it? None that I see. Yeah, let's do Check. it. He'll have to give up his rook. Check. It'd be nice if I could win the e6 pawn with check on the next move. Plays king e8. Okay, so he is allowing me to do that. I could keep the tension on and play like knight f3 or something, just get developed, but am I really going to pass up the win of another pawn? Probably not. If I take on e6, I've completely annihilated his pawns from the e file through the h file, <laughs> so that's pretty nice. Um, knight f3 also looks pretty good, though. Knight f3... If he takes on d4, I can take with the knight. Knight takes e5 would be losing then in view of queen h8 check, forking the king in the knight. Queen takes e6 is just so good, though. Queen takes e6, queen e7, trade the queens. Let's say castles then. Take on c3, pawn takes c3. Yeah, there's too many pawns. I'm going to do that. Um, you know, other moves look good, too, but... Check. It's so hard to pass up the win of this pawn, another pawn, with check when I'm already doing pretty well in the position, very well. Could take d5, but if I take d5, he takes d4, and e5 becomes weak, so let's just check. swap. I think I'm just going to swap and then castle queen side. Which threatens knight takes d5, so it doesn't give him a chance to take on d4. Now I'm going to focus on advancing this massive pawn majority that I have. I think I'll go knight e2. I like that. Defends d4, and maybe I can make my way to f4. So now I'm just thinking complete development and uh, you know get ready to start pushing. Take this way to keep e5 defended. So I have a rook and three pawns versus his two minor pieces. With the bonus being that all my pawns are connected. He's probably going to put his bishop on f5. Knight b6 actually was a pretty good move. Because that defends d5, it opens up his bishop, kind of eyes the c4 square. So that's, uh, that's sensible. So h4, should I just start sprinting with this pawn? h4, bishop f5. Hmm. I might have to worry about some c-file stuff, like if bishop f5, rook c8 is played. So I'm just deciding now like how much I want to try to limit his play. I mean, I have to keep in mind that my rooks are not incredibly active at the moment. So, he is going to have some temporary activity. It'd be nice if I could rule out bishop f5, but I can't. Hmm. f3, bishop f5, g4, let's say bishop h7. It's not really getting us anywhere. Yeah, he has just enough to, enough play to make it annoying. I could try to lift my rook to d3, but it's not going to do much after bishop f5. Knight g3 is probably just a good move here, huh? What do I have against knight g3? 
the fact that it blocks my g-pawn, that's about it. And originally having intended knight f4, but I like it because I think f5 is such a good square for his bishop. It's worth playing this move to stop him from getting there. And now I can go f4, f5. It supports that. So that's what I'll be doing to try to cramp him. a5 is kind of random. Okay, f4. He can go bishop g4, but I'll just play bishop d3. Plays knight c4. Yeah, it's kind of like he's just going for a kingside attack, basically, or a uh, queenside attack. Maybe here, rook d3, knight b4 is annoying. If f5, knight e3, is that his plan? Maybe. Yeah, this knight is becoming slightly annoying. Hmm. I'm going to play f5. Keep going. If he plays knight e3, I'll go f6 check. I think I want to push these pawns before he gets too much play. Hmm. Unabashedly going for the a2 pawn. <laughs> well, I could play king b1 to guard it. c3, knight takes a2, king c2. Can I trap that piece? Maybe, but it's messy. I gotta watch my time. My time's getting low. If king b1, he has knight a3 check. So that probably rules that out right there. Mm. Actually, I don't know. I might have spoke too soon on that. Nah, king b1, knight a3 check is not good. Ugh, annoying. Quite annoying as I try to figure out how best to defuse this situation. Alright, I have a weird idea. No. A3 is knight a2 check, king b1, knight c3. Okay, that's silly. Hmm. All right, I gotta make a decision soon. A4, he has knight a2 again. Hmm. Gotta make a decision. Maybe should not have gone for this entire line, but what to do right now? Rook d3. Rook d3 would be funky. Possibly not in a good way, though. Nothing I'm looking at is any good right now. King b1, knight a3, check. King a1, could I do then? Takes on c2. Alright, you know what? I'm just going to play this move. Really wasn't sure how to proceed, so... So my plan right now is knight a3 check, king a1. And then force him to take on c2 so I can put my king on b2. His knights are so... So capable of harassing me, though. Um, H3, or C3, I mean. 
What is his plan against that? He's just playing very quickly now. Okay, let's do it. If I can get him to go back to c6, that's great. He does. Okay, let's tuck the king away. If knight e3, I'll still play f6 check. He seems content to play this game at blitz speed, so maybe I should respond accordingly. Hmm. Okay. Let's just push the h-pawn. It's one of my outside passers, so. Knight d2. What does that do? Not a whole lot, I don't think. Just keep pushing. If knight e3, I think I can keep pushing my h-pawn even further. Knight e3, h6, knight takes d1, h7. Can't even stop it. Now let's keep going with this guy. Um, f6, you might have bishop e6. Let's go here. Actually should have played h7 check first, but I think it's okay. Check. Hides his king. Hmm. Knight h5, trying to come to f6. Okay. Or do I play rook b1 just to be safe? Nah, I think this is okay. And if knight a3, I have knight c2, so... Ooh, didn't see that move. Now he's threatening mate and my rook, so I have to go here. But if he takes on f5, I still have knight f6. But suddenly the position got a lot messier. And I have a minute and a half, and he has ten and a half. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so knight f6. What a nightmare of a position to play with little time. I mean, there, there's ways he could have made this a lot tougher. Now I think he's losing, but... If he would have slowed down at some point and turn the screws on me a little bit instead of just playing at blitz speed the whole time he really might have had some chances yeah now he can't avoid mate check just take it's forced rook g8 mate coming if he takes my rook check mate Okay, so let's have a look at that. So this one is um, the big story, and this one is winning a one game, basically. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind my position was totally winning after I sacrificed on g6. But you got to get the job done, and clearly I didn't get the job done in the best way. I mean, my time management alone will tell you that. So this is the McCutcheon variation and the bishop coming back to d2. So the main line is bishop takes c3, b takes c3, knight e4, and then queen g4, attacking g7. And here, as in a lot of French positions, black has a choice between g6 and king f8. Uh, g6, I believe, is the main line. It's more popular. King f8 is kind of a secondary move, but also makes a lot of sense. But he went knight back to d7 instead, and queen g4. 
I bet knight fd7 has been played before in this position, but um, I'm going to guess that his subsequent play was not so accurate. I mean, if it were me, I'd probably play king f8 or maybe even this bishop f8 move. It's kind of funky, but it might be okay. Because I don't know if he really wants to exchange on c3 anymore. Um, even though it seems like he's wasted some tempos, my setup is not desirable really either. He's going to play c5, and I don't have a lot of defenders going for d4 and e5 at the moment. So it's it's a strange position. This is why the Winnower is such a good line for black and the French. It leads to some very imbalanced positions where um, it's not clear how much better white is because the positions are so unusual. So he played g6, and I just played bishop d3. Yeah, and I bet c5 is a mistake. Knight b5 was my original intention, because that's often a way you take advantage of the d6 square. But let's just flick on the engine, see what it says. It says a3, actually. So how is it going to rate my bishop takes g6 move? It says that his best move is to ignore it and defend the queen takes e6 threat, so that's promising. Um, I mean, you don't play c5 intending after bishop takes g6 to play queen e7, <laughs> so the chances of him doing that move are low. Um, but I'm surprised that he took six seconds only to take on g6, because this seems to give white like a much better, if not winning, position. So and that kind of indicates like maybe he saw bishop takes g6 coming, but even still, I mean, you don't want to take a little more time and just try to find something. Uh, or double check some variations because this is a major turning point in this game. So check. yeah, and here took they took on g6. Check. This also was tempting, but queen e7 or king f8. Probably queen e7 is better. King f8 maybe is not quite as good. Queen takes g6. But yeah. Check. My capture on g6 looks correct. Check. This is forced. As I said, if he goes to e7, I have queen check. g7 check picking up the rook next move. So king f8, Check. bishop takes h6. Check. Has to give up his rook for the bishop. Check. Yep, and I took this pawn. Yeah, I wonder if it's better, in hindsight, just to play a move like knight f3. And keep the queens on the board. His king is stuck in the center. Um, he has everything going on the queen side and nothing going on the king side. <laughs> but I just I couldn't turn down that Check. pawn on e6 with check. We still have a plus three advantage. The computer approves of this. Check. It's giving the very line that I played in the game. Now castles attack d5. Yeah, I'm just surprised that this wasn't easier. Knight c6. Yep, knight e2. Take c takes knight b6. And here I spent some time because it just seemed to me like if I... If I um, played some routine moves, he would play bishop f5 and then rook c8, and he might have some pressure against my king. It seems like I'm kind of castling into it when I do castle queenside here, but um, I want to keep my center together, and he is threatening to take on d4. So if I were to play like knight g2 or something, he could take, and then after knight takes, he can take e5, is what I was trying to avoid. But I do pay the price after I castle queenside in that. Uh, my own king safety comes into question. So, I think he played this stage like actually pretty well, given how fast he was playing. Yeah, c3 would have been a good expenditure of a single tempo to prevent knight b4, because that knight b4 move, <laughs> when he played it, that I didn't realize how strong it was. Here I was just focusing on getting my majority activated as quickly as possible. I was kind of paranoid about waiting too long to move these pawns. But after knight c4, f5, knight b4, yeah, this was tricky. The cold-blooded engine says c3, knight Check. takes a2, king c2. I thought about that line, trying to trap his knight with rook a1, but I thought he would play bishop here with the idea of rook a1, bishop Check. a4, Check. Computer is not impressed, but I was looking Check. at this and I wasn't seeing a clear cut way to defend. King e3? Can't he just take on c3? Yeah, this is this is getting messy. This might be one of these games where like it looks messy to you as a human the entire time, but the computer's like, no, what are you worried about? You're still winning. You've got 
four connected pass pawns. <laughs> but I'm trying to find some way to like win cleanly, which is a problem of mine. I've mentioned before, like a lot of times when I get in a position that I know should be winning, I'll try to find precisely the best continuation. Um, oh, and also there's 93 check. I didn't even see 93 check. check. But I guess after 93 check, I just go here and check. even though he can win my rook, I'm going to win his minor piece. And again, the pawns will have their day eventually. Hmm. I would have liked to have spent even more time on this decision, but I spent three minutes before playing King B1. Um, in a tournament game, I would be thinking pretty hard here. So C3 is okay, huh? Check. It's pretty... Interesting. Bishop d7, I just... Oh, king b3. Wow, totally didn't see king b3. Yeah, that's the easiest of all. Yeah, the knight's trapped. Pfft, didn't even see that move whatsoever. <laughs> Oversight. Yeah, so c3 would have been good. King b1. Yeah, my intention was if check. knight a3 checked to actually go here and like be fancy, like make him take one of the pawns, a pawn on c2, and then, then go here. And I thought he would have trouble with his knight coordination, but maybe not. Maybe he just does something like that, wins a tempo on the rook, attacks f5. The knight can come to c4, perhaps. But he played rook a6, and again, his time management, like... It's, it's a stage of the game where I understand that he wants to continue playing quickly to keep me under pressure on the clock, but he, he's starting to have some serious chances. Looks like rook a6 was a good move, but somewhere around here, he had to come up with something better, or something more testing. If not in an objective sense, then a practical sense. And it, it would have been worth spending another minute or two. Because... Like, rook b6 was kind of a short-sighted move, right? Like, now I play rook b1, and he just immediately went back to a6. And then I'm like, okay, I've survived the worst of this. Let's just go a h4 and try to push my pawn. So, yeah, like here, this, this position looks critical. Like knight a3 check needs to be examined. Something other than just immediately playing knight c6 after 11 seconds. Let's just see if there any there's any um, way he could confuse the issue after this because actually it got a little dicey. I pushed my h pawn. I probably should have played h seven check. I just couldn't yeah. see exactly how to proceed thereafter. See the engine says just advance your pawns. Once again, we have a situation where advancing the pawns on the same color as your opponent's bishop is wise because if I were to play f seven on the other hand, he can play bishop e six and blockade the pawns. Um, I wouldn't really pay attention to the engine eval here, but um, yeah, e6 is more thematic in playing against this bishop. So, what did I do? I played here, which also seems to be winning. Check. Or g5 check, yep. King here. If he had played king h7, I was going to go rook g7 check, trying to get him to take so that then I can do this and check. then bring the rook over to h1 and do a little hallway checkmate. So... He played king h8, avoiding that. Oh, h7. Okay, yeah, h7 would have threatened rook g8 with a similar idea. Uh-huh. Okay, that would have been good. I played knight h5 because I was trying to orchestrate this mating net with knight f6 and rook g8. Looks like it's still good. This was a close call, though. Knight e3, and <laughs> if I was just a little bit too eager, I could have easily ran into this mate. That would have been embarrassing. So I did play rook c1, and he took on f5, I played knight f6. Yeah, he had knight e7 to defend g8. I think I would have played, probably played h7 or rook g7 against that, probably rook g7, just to attack the knight. Ah, but okay, then he can go knight c2 check. I have to take it, give up the exchange. And then I don't have time to take his knight because of rook b1 mate. So I would have had to play a4. It still looks messy, even though it's totally winning, but with a minute on your clock, um, not the easiest of, of positions to play. Hmm. But that's an example of something that, you know, he should have spent a little time on. I played knight f6, and he 
within four seconds played bishop h7, and after rook g7, it's over. But if he spends the extra even like 10 to 30 seconds to realize, okay, bishop h7 is going to lose to rook g7, I should play knight e7 instead. Hey, I mean, I could I could go awry here very easily, I think, too. So, yep, so time management and uh, winning in one position, two big themes of this game. And after knight f6, he played bishop h7, rook g7, and there's no way to avert mate in a few moves. Check. Rook b1 would just be a spite check, so... Checkmate. Okay. You know, this is an interesting dilemma in chess. Like, the computer is Check. telling me that I played Check. fine the entire way. Check. Yet, Check. I came away from this game feeling like my technique was poor, even though the computer says, you're fine. I mean, a lot of it's a function of the, of the time control. I guess I don't regret, like, any one move other than maybe uh, king b1 instead of c3. Not seeing uh, c3, Check. knight takes a2, king here, uh, bishop d7, king b3. I do regret that. In hindsight, I probably would have kept the queens on the board. I don't know that I would have gone for this position. Because keeping the queens on the board also looks good. And, uh, you know, I have less chances to allow counterplay, I think. Which yeah. seems like a weird thing to say, keeping the queens on the board, giving him less chances when he's in a very bad position. But it's kind of true Check. here. Check. All right, well, food for thought in this one. Lots to discuss. So if you have any feedback about this game, feel free to post it. And thank you guys for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard game. Bye, guys.